Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on the ICC and uh, following Grandmaster Yardbird, who just got paired up. This is a three-minute game against uh, our beast. Okay. Hmm. Not so sure A6 is a move that we would see out of this variation. Could be wrong, but okay. I, w I said could because maybe you could put it to use with the later B5, but with the knight on B6, you kind of rule that out. So, decision time to take or not. Okay, we're having a capture. Maybe there's a, an idea to quickly blow open the position. So, again, three minute rating here. I was hoping he would play a five minute one, but I'll take the three minute one here and we'll check what Stockfish, ha Stockfish has to say after this one. So, a slight lead in development. This will be a problem for Black, their queen bishop, but has control over uh, the d5 square, an isolated queen pawn position. Knight b4 to d5. And uh, maybe there's ideas of uh, backing up the bishop with queen to d6. However, this knight is going to be a reliable defender for white's king side. So maybe bishop g5 as a candidate move. Okay. Knight d5, I would imagine knight e4 to avoid exchanges. Okay, we're not having that. If knight takes pawn, uh, if knight takes, we'll have pawn takes, and then black can't rely upon the d5 square anymore. There could always be a c4 move to control the d5 point. So now this is very awkward. The knight has to come back to defend. g6 would drop h6. So now he's clearly going to be, need, uh, you need to keep him around to watch over h7. So is there a way to dislodge this knight? Hmm. One of the first moves I think about is d5, just to blast open the position, but I'm not sure what the great follow-up would be. So there's still some... Uh, more prep moves needed on the white side, apparently. Rook A to D1. Okay, knight to, knight to E5 is a very common move. Uh, with this isolated queen pawn structure. Landing into one of those support points. C5 and E5. Sometimes you could see knight to E4 to C5. And, well, the more direct king knight dropping into E5. C6 square is available, but not sure what the follow-up would be. So it's always rook A to C1 or rook A to D1. Um, maybe, oh, this is also permitting a queen come on, coming over in this direction. Okay, so structure has changed. This bishop still needs to do something. This queen has some lateral movement. Queen of G3 would be throwing a threat. Ooh, okay. That's something just quite direct, isn't it? What's the follow-up here? Bishop takes h6. Pawn takes queen g3. King h8. And where's the follow-up from there? Queen h4, maybe. Well, well we're going to see it soon enough. Blocking is not going to be a good idea because you could always attack it. Um, my first thought actually was some piece blocking to take, but we're in a pin here. The knight can't necessarily move. So queen h4, king g7? Would then allow rook, a rook lift, maybe rook e3 to g3. We'll soon find out if this was a sound sacrifice or not. So where's the follow-up here? Okay, it is rook to e3. And then knight g4. Offering a queen exchange. Ooh, this might have been something white overlooked here. Knight g4 hits the rook and looks to remove the number one attacking piece. Black is up that minor piece. White only has a pawn for it. So, are we going to have an instance where this attack simply backfired? Hmm. Okay, queen g3. All right, the knight's pinned. He get out of it. King h8? Hmm. King h8, queen g5. Oh. Well, that's a very convenient way to defend, right? Or is it? <laughs> I was just going to say, why not develop a piece and defend against... Uh, this tactical issue, the pin, but okay, here we go with f4. Now the knight is back on to being pinned, and he's going to be hit again. We have just that, so 49 seconds apiece. So it seems like he's just going to fall. What about, um, now we're just getting out of the pin. So pawn takes, and now white is, ooh, trapping the queen. That's super painful. That's gg. Yeah. Resignation time right there. Ouch. Let's go back over this game. This was a quick one. Three minute game. And I'm very curious to know 
if that was a sound sacrifice or not. So let me go into the history here for a moment, bring it up, and see what the computer says about this one. I'm also curious about the opening as well with this A6 move. Uh, it's well, not not a bad move, but um, uh, so, sometimes I think you could try to go in for a Marazzi bind with C4 when you're seeing this A6 advance. And uh, I'm not so sure if Black is able to put that to use. Not a bad move, but trying trying to maybe go into a variation where it's can't be justified. Okay, so it was C3, Knight F6. Just kind of skimming through, seeing or checking for any big jumps with the evaluation. Okay, E6, Knight B6. All right, nothing crazy so far. It is recommending the capture. And, well, seems pretty even. The typical edge that you would expect, white having a slight space advantage, d4 versus e6 structure. All right, the knight's kicked. And then bishop c2, okay, we're going to see soon enough now. This seems to be a problem, h6. Queen c7 is being suggested. Pressure on both h2 and c3. And now it's jumping back over to bishop d7, trying to get that bishop back to developed, or um, complete development, I should say. So h6, queen d3, f5. Hmm. There's probably an issue with this, isn't there? Yeah, that's a pretty big jump, actually. f5, and that's not really a move you want to have to make. Super weakening to e6 and e5. This turns out to be a wonderful home, and... You also have that g6 square you could be jumping into as an ensuing move, knight e5 to g6, if you have that f5 advance. So instead it was knight f6, and now we have, well, first bishop d2. What would have been better instead of bishop to d2? They're saying knight, knight to e5 right away. And if bishop takes, rook takes. Seems about to be a, a, pound, and, a pound and a half advantage. Okay, instead it was the more tame approach. Bishop d2, knight e5, and the big question here, after this exchange, after the structure change, is bishop takes h6 being called for? No. Is it a bad move? No, it's reading as zero. So where was the defense? g takes, queen g3, that was played in the game. And now queen f4. Hmm, something wrong with queen h4? No. I guess the best here is just this little back and forth. So where did black really slip up? Hmm. White is the one who really slipped up. I guess best case for white is to go back to g3, king h8, queen h4. Is there something better here that black can be doing? I doubt that this is a good idea. Oh, this is a killer shot. Knight takes f7. That would be painful. So you really can't uh, try and defend with the knight to h7, in other words. So I guess best for white was to be going back and forth. Rook to e3, apparently there's a very strong defense, and it is knight g4. So what was missed exactly? Knight g4, queen g3? Oh, man. f6. Ah, oh, just taking advantage of this pin. How do you like that? It's reading as minus 4. Oh, man. That would have been it, I think. Removing one of these defenders, there's going to be a way to defend. This is also, keep in mind, opening up the seventh rank. If white is, if black is needing some lateral defense, it'll be there, certainly, with the queen rook or the queen or the other rook. F6 would have done it, I guess. Time advantage at this point was actually in black's favor, so. Mm, missed opportunity with F6 there to defend, exploiting this pin instead. Queen g5, and that's that's the big transition in the game. Move 23. Queen g5, f4, strong move. Exploiting the pin, and before you know it, the queen is pretty much dead. Best is this. Knight takes, or even queen takes, right? Nothing wrong with that, either way. Um, but, okay, that was a pretty quick game. I was hoping for a five-minute one, but I'll take the three-minute one observing uh, Grandmaster Yardbird. So... Uh, that's all for this video. As always, I hope you got something out of it. Take care. Bye. This is uh, 
quite passive setup on the black side. G6 is an interesting attempt at blunting that diagonal altogether. So it has a grip over E5. Black's not so quick to give that square up, 